and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Players Podcast presented by Elpa. Today is a very special episode. Um, we have a great episode uh, for many reasons, for, for a lot of reasons. First of all, this is our, uh, our first live recording episode uh, today. Um, thank you to the, the wonderful host of, of the Airness uh, Apparel Store here in Milan. <clears throat> for giving us the opportunity to uh, to host our podcast here. And for a second reason, um, just because of that, um, I had to break out the big guns. Um, you know, I, I couldn't necessarily just have just one guest. I had to bring out two, um, two of the most prominent uh, players um, in Italian basketball history. Um, they just so happened to be, um, you know, my teammates. Um, great guests, great guys, um, two guys I, I, I love and, uh, and I, I enjoy playing with. That is Mr. Luigi Detome and, and Niccolo Melli. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you for and Kyle. Great yeah. words, a nice word. We don't deserve this, but we are really happy to be here. Actually, as I told you, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, disappointed because I was not one of the first <laughs> guests ever. But it's okay. We are doing it in a nice way. But so you're, the, you're the first live guest. Yes. Yeah, so I, I okay. We can, okay. <laughs> I got it now. Kyle, thank you for inviting us, and I know why you wait to invite Gigi. You were waiting for me. So <laughs> exactly. You know. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, our careers have kind of, uh, I guess, kind of, kind of come full circle to this point. Um, for many people that don't know, um, back in a long, long time ago, 2008, me and Nick played each other uh, in second division when he was the, the young age of 16 years old. Um, and Gigi, enough, uh, I played in Vera League where he was at the time in Rome. Um, my very first EuroLeague game was to watch, see him come, uh, see him play versus Maccabi many, many years ago. And we ran into each other playing friendly games and, and other times I would watch them from afar in Rome. So um, I'm happy to be here with you guys, like I said today. I mean, if I think finally I'm, I'm your teammate, Kyle, yeah. finally, I'm very happy to be finally your teammate. But it's crazy how, you know, my first year as a professional player when I was 16, I actually play against you. Yeah. And uh, you were in Veroli with uh, Andrea Trinchieri as a coach and uh, you were already dominating the, the league uh, and uh, you were not, I guess. No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Definitely <laughs> wasn't. Near, no, near. no, no, absolutely. <laughs> I wasn't. And, uh, you know, of course, after uh, after playing against each other and, you know, I was impressed of, you know, Thank how you. how you were playing because, you know, you were probably one of the first, I would say, undersized center and how you were playing and how you really dominated the game. And I, you know, I kept following you. And uh, finally being able to be on your side after, you know, after losing many times against you uh, <laughs> is, is nice. <laughs> but is, you know, uh, as you say, we are coming to a full circle. And what you have done in this in these years is just just amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now, easy question. The first first question is an easy question. Do you guys remember the first time you met each other? I tried to remove the, the <laughs> memory. <laughs> it was a bad moment in my life, first of all. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I had therapy after that. Uh, actually, I, I, do. I, I don't remember because you were not something special to remember. I always remember your first love, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you finally, you admit. <laughs> finally, you admit. Let's take the opportunity to have a coming out uh, <laughs> <laughs> today. When was it? Uh, when was it? It was a national team, for sure. Okay. And you came in uh, um, in Rome. Okay. It was a little, uh, how, you, how you can say, arrogantello. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little cocky. A little, a little cocky. cocky. A little cocky. So, you know, I need to take care of him and to yes. we don't show him the right way. We don't, we don't say what you did. <laughs> As a punishment. I was not there. No, no, you were there. I, I remember there. your ugly face no. coming out of the door and no, checking no, what's going on. No, no, I remember. You definitely. I remember. Yeah, so, I you see, still, I still, I still remember. Yeah, where you I didn't remember. remember it was the first time I met you. No, but it was uh, really, okay, a uh, talented kid because they just had the final of Eurobasket that year. Yes. So, we so it was 2011. The lost against the Spain of Miotic, if yeah. I'm not wrong. Um, so you know, here and there, sometimes they they pick up the. I mean, uh, you cannot put it that way. <laughs> Lost to them. I mean, we won the no, silver no, medal. No, it's a, no, it's a medal. Yes, it, no, yes. no, no. Somebody I, else won the bronze. Uh, didn't win the. But silver. you know, when you finish winning a final, <laughs> yes, the, right. The now. taste is better than losing <laughs> a final. <laughs> anyway, right. uh, so you know, the and uh, he showed a lot of personality coming into the team, taking you know the shots. He was not refusing any any shots. That's uh, that's why I feel I felt he was cocky. Uh, but he was, you know, uh, very young, but very talented. And of course, 
everybody knew that he could do great things and then mm. he was on him and he put a lot of work of course and then uh, good things uh, will come didn't come so far but will come for sure <laughs> if <he can't> <laughs> but <laughs> could could you imagine all these years later that you guys would be as close as you are as far as like a friendship and you know what you both wanted off the board no actually no i couldn't i couldn't no, you couldn't that. tell back then you couldn't tell but um after after a couple years when i you know when I, I became a little bit more an adult, you know, yeah. more, uh, uh, you know, more Less, cocky, less, cocky, less yeah. cocky, yes. No, <laughs> but the thing, then we always had, uh, you know, a special connection, a, speci a special bond. You know, Gigi is is a decent player, I would say. Mid uh, decent, yeah. decent, decent, yeah, when you play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, as a, a human being, you know, is, is, you know, he has his interest, you know, he reads, he's always, you know, he, he speaks about s different stuff than yeah. basketball. And... Yeah. To me, this was always something very important. You know, for me, basketball, of course, is one of the most important part of my life. But there are there is so much more out there. And with Gigi, I always had the chance to talk about that. Maybe we disagree many times mm -hmm. because, but I mean, it's something nice to have a teammate like this. And you know, when you start talking about important stuff about stuff outside basketball, then you create a bond, you create a relationship. And then, of course, playing two years in Fenerbahce together, being a roommate. Uh, in Fenerbahce, uh, taking care of everything the, the he was... Walls, the walls had eyes. No, <laughs> but taking care of every, everything he was leaving in the room when we were checking out, uh, that was, uh, you know, it, it made our relationship uh, stronger, for sure. Now I want to go all the way back to the beginning. Um, my, my daughter was talking to me today, and she was like, Dad, I don't have a dream yet. And she's been really big about dreams. So it made me wonder, you know, when you guys were both younger, what was your initial dream? Was it basketball? Was it like, what was your dreams kind of growing up? Mm, can I talk a little bit or it's only you? <laughs> okay. Um, no, I mean, dream when I was a kid, when you say dream, it was just playing basketball. Yeah. Not even having a goal, just playing basketball. I remember my, my mom asked it uh, when we were coming back home from practice and she told me, like, you know, uh, she threw the question, what do you want to do when you be an adult? I mm. say, mom, I'm going to uh, play basketball. And she pull over and say, hey, Gigi, basketball is not a real job. Like, you need to study and do uh, other jobs. And in my, also naive, and he said, uh, you know, I, I want to play basketball. This is my, uh, my work. Mm -hmm. And it became reality with a lot of uh, work, a lot of luck. Um, a lot of luck. A lot, a lot of luck. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this was the dream. I uh, was not uh, maybe yes, maybe it was uh, became play of national team uh, yeah. playing with uh, in the Serie A. Uh, I was watching Myers, Fuchka, great Italian players, Meneghin, and what well, was not even a target. Was really a dream. And mm -hmm. then became I achieved really more than I dreamed about. Uh, dreamed about. So if I look back, I feel pff, more than blessed and more than lucky. Really, more than lucky. Uh, for me, my dream as a, as a kid uh, was uh, to play in the NBA because mm -hmm. uh, I remember I had these three cassettes at home uh, with uh, Dr. Dr. J, Larry mm -hmm. Bird, and I was just keep watching them, you know, the, the Chicago Bulls of Michael Jordan. So I was, that was my dream, you know, to play in the NBA. And the other was, uh, uh, is still... <laughs> to to win uh something with the national team mm -hmm. uh, and i remember when i was watching uh, the final of the olympics mm -hmm. in 2004 uh when the, the the italian team won the silver medal and you know for me it was a big thing i had the italian jersey on and those were my two dreams as a kid uh, one i was able to you know to to make it happen playing the nba the other one is you know still a work in progress you'll get there you'll definitely get there hopefully now, um, you both grew up in the, I would guess many would consider the height of Serie A or the Italian League, you know, at the time where, you know, Bologna and Treviso and, you know, Siena, Milan were all winning titles, you know, some of the best players in the world, Ginobili, um, you know, in Reggio Emilia, you know, you had, you know, uh, you know, Michael, I think it's Michael Mitchell and, you know, Kobe Bryant's father was, you know, there. So I'm curious, you know, because like I'm a basketball historian at heart. What was it like as a youth growing up during the, during that time, you know, when Italy was like the height and kind of like the golden and the, the top place to be for basketball? What were kind of like your memories of some of those some of those times? Well, actually, Mike Mitchell is my idol, yeah. like my real idol. Like before Michael Jordan, before everybody, Mike Mitchell is my idol, and he's also why I always try to play with the number four. Mm -hmm. It's not possible here in Milan, but I had the four in Bamberg and Fenerbahce. Um, I mean. 
for me, I was going to, to, to watch the games uh, at the arena in Reggio Emilia. And uh, at the time, we had Mike Mitchell, Gianluca Basile. And uh, so it was, we were not the team. But, you know, competing against certain teams was amazing. And then watch uh, Virtus, Fortitudo. Uh, I mean, it, it, it was... It was amazing. It was just amazing. And I was lucky to born to be born and to grow up in Reggio Emilia where basketball is actually the f- main, s- main yeah. sport. Yeah. So we were like living for basketball. And being able to have so many talents in, in Italy was, you know, something special and something that always inspired me growing up. Uh, me living in Sardinia was a little bit different because uh, we d- I didn't have this, uh, this opportunity to watch live games of uh, Serie A. Like uh, the top team of Olbia, my own time, was in fourth division. Mm-hmm. And f- to me, it was the NBA. Mm-hmm. Like I was cleaning the, the floor and really, m- maybe my first dream was to be one of those players. Um, the real first dream. So, um, but I, we had the opportunity. That there was only one game, I remember, on Saturday afternoon, like 3, 3.30. They were showing also maybe only second half of the game of the um, Serie A and uh, that was you know something uh, something huge to watch it and to to watch those teams maybe I, I didn't understand I didn't realize how big their team was just mm-hmm. you, you could you could watch just basketball at a very high level and as I say there was Basile, Fuchka, Myers those players the na- national team was uh, the, the main players and you were cheering for them and looking at them and trying to do the same moves on the court and uh, so on. And then when I'm, because I'm born close to Treviso, my mom is from there, when I u- used to go to visit my grandma, especially on the for the holidays in uh, Christmas time, maybe there was an opportunity to go to see live in Pala Verde the Benetton, and that was uh, incredible. Mm-hmm. I remember trying to give the high five to Henry Williams, <laughs> RIP, uh, incredible players. And so I, I remember there was something incredible, mm-hmm. something that, you know, like like NBA, something that you can now never be part of. But I was a kid, of course, and then growing up it was, I smell. I, w- I was meaning that I could have the opportunity to be there at least, and then maybe b- be part of that war. So that was my you know fire inside. Now both of you started your professional career at 16, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Gigi, you you left home, left the, the island of Sardinia to to go to Siena. Um, Nick, you stayed home. What was it like to realize that dream of being professional at 16 years old? It was a trauma uh, because, you know, I was playing uh, basketball just for fun and then all of a sudden I was in a club that just reached the, the first Final Four Euro yeah. League, so it was treating me like a pro. Yeah. It was great for me because, you know, I started to be a pro at such a young age and made me mature faster. Uh, but it was a trauma at the beginning because uh, I was going to the, uh, to the basketball uh, arena just to, to hoop with my friends uh, before going to Siena. After that, they were... You know, uh, they were demanding to perform uh, with the kids, uh, to be ready to practice with the top team. Uh, so it was a little uh, traumatic, but, you know, it was my moment to see, okay, I want to see and show if I can think about this for the rest of my life and being this my, my life. It was an opportunity, and, of course, I put a lot of uh, enthusiasm in that. And uh, after the first moment that you miss home, you miss your friends and stuff, you you realize how lucky you, ha- you, um, you are to take uh, advantage of this opportunity and uh, after that of course I never look back. For you Nick, uh, was it a different experience? Did you feel a different type of pressure because you were playing at home and for the club that you said like you had watched since you, you know, since you were a young child? Um, it, was, uh, it was a special moment. I remember that the coach at the time called my parents because I didn't have an agent yeah. back then I was 16 I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, I called my parents and said yeah I mean I want to I want to bring your your son and first team, you know, he's ready to play. And I don't know if I was ready to play, to be honest. Uh, it was the second division. Uh, you know, it was physical. And, you know, I was this tall, but like 30, 35 kilos less. Skinny. <laughs> Very skinny. skinny. <laughs> and uh, and I don't know if I was ready to, to for the impact of the physicality. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's also why in my first three years of career, I went through three big injuries. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if I could go back if I would pick the same decision, you yeah. know, because you know the body is also something very important. You know, like you have two knees, and you cannot just you know change them right away. And uh, I don't know if I was ready, but as a kid, when the when the when the coach said, "Okay, we want to bring you in the first team. You're ready to go." I mean, for me, it was like touching the sky with a finger. It was the best moment and uh, and then 
and then it was you know going straight after school to practice on Saturdays because on Saturdays they were practicing a little bit earlier than usual and uh, I remember this that we were always going by bus everywhere mm -hmm. so Reggio Emilia is in the north of Italy and we had to go by bus in Caserta close to Naples and it's like a 10 hours bus ride and uh, and my parents were were very strict about it I had to go to school mm -hmm. I couldn't skip class mm -hmm. And so I remember uh, that we got back from Caserta around like, I don't know, 6.30 in the morning because we, has, we had also to celebrate the win because we won in Caserta. So we had to go out for dinner. And I was like, come on, guys, I need to go to school. And I got back at home 6.37 and at 8 I was in class. So it was, it was tough at the beginning because I had to attend school and everything. But, you know, playing for the team of your city, being a pro so young, it was at the same time also a, a dream becoming true. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit to the national team. We're gonna jump a you know a couple of different subjects. Um, both you guys were named captains. You know, at one point, Nick recently with the Olympic team, GG previously. <laughs> we'll get to that. I'm not laughing. At this. <laughs> we'll get that to a little bit, but um, you know, I know that there is you no know, me playing here and living here in Italy. I know there's a pride you know, for playing for the national team. So when you both were named, you know, to the national team, first of all, as a player, um, what was that feeling like, you know, to wear that, you know, wear that national team jersey? Like you said, Nick, before it was a dream of yours, you had the, the replica jersey. So what, what was that feeling like for you the first time you, you know, wore that national team jersey? I mean, for me, it was a dream, but to be honest, my relationship, so we have to, to separate two things. One was the youth program. Yeah. That was always for me beside the, the, the years that i had injuries was always great mm -hmm. to go there to see my friends they were friends like we were just hooping you know they were throwing the ball in the, up in the air and we would go up and down traveling around europe and playing against other uh, national teams it was for me like amazing then when i when i i went to the adults team to the first team you know it was it was weird it was weird i was uh, uh maybe also there i wasn't ready you yeah. know for that and uh, my first couple of years were i would say tough mm -hmm. uh and so i i believe the relationship with with the national team for me grew 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 and now it's like i cannot wait to go back mm -hmm. you know like i know that as soon as we finish the the the, the, the season here two days after I need to go to the national team because we have the qualification for the cannot wait. Yeah. I'm ready. I like I'm ready. And uh, and I was also very, very proud to be captain this last summer, even though, you know, I was just because Gigi couldn't be there for for an injury. And uh, but right now for me is like is is like a second skin, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, I cannot wait to go back to the national team. Uh, you know, it happened to be part of national team of my age when I was back in 2001, so 13. I had, yes, I was going to be 14 in November, so I was 13. But to get to national team first, you have to be in the team of your um, region. region. Before that, province. Province, so. Providence. Pro Pro yeah, yeah. So basically like the city. There so is I a city so selection, the basically. I knew that I was going to be part of the province because I knew the others, but I was, you know, I don't know if I'd be part of the Sardinia or the island mm -hmm. because so I, I, I've been part of the island, it was incredible. Yeah. And then they told me that I was going to be national team part. I was like, this was incredible. Think how bad was the national team <laughs> at the time. <laughs> and I was Think immediately the captain. I mean, no talents uh, at all, <laughs> like disaster. <laughs> How was that? Daniel Hackett was cut from the team. Can you imagine the <laughs> level of the but talent? Sometimes <laughs> when you think about, you know, what happened, sorry, what happened in your past and yeah. who you met, no, what happened good. to them, how did you make them? It's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I met so many guys when I was 16, 17, and we had so many different paths. And maybe, you know, at the time I was struggling, they were doing great. Now I'm a little bit, uh, it's, it's yeah. amazing. If you think about it, it's, it's very you know, tough to understand basketball. when you are 16, 17, who gonna be a player. Yeah. It's very tough. As I say, Daniel had an incredible career, but at that age he was a little chubby and he was out of the 12. Mm -hmm. and you if you think about it now, I say, how is it possible? Yeah, because it careers are, yes, mm -hmm. careers are how incredible. How is possible you were in the And I was always there. <laughs> I'm incredible. <laughs> <laughs> no, and as I said, it was, you know, I did uh, five Eurobasket as a young, five as a um, senior, uh, been the captain the last 10 years. It's something uh, incredible. I think it's still the romantic part of being a pro mm -hmm. uh, because when you f look for a team, I mean, you sign for a team, you have goals, and you are paid, so they pretend, but this is, 
you go there, you, you want to be part of national team. Yeah. You, have, you want to have a role in the team, to succeed, uh, to spend your summer. That at the begin at beginning, you do it for fun because you are a kid, you want to hoop. Certain age, you see, you think maybe, you, you know, if I take a summer off, it's good for my body, for my next uh, contract and stuff. But you do it because really it's you feel bad to stay home because yeah. the national team is something that you have the opportunity to do it is the best thing in that's basketball. What, that's what I mean, like, as far as, like, sense of pride. Like, I'm, like, as an American, like, we know that we're not i'm not going to play for the dream team so it's almost like i'm almost like a little i bit i disagree with the yeah, selection but you understand you understand yeah, no, like no. you know i'm i'm envious and jealous of you guys because it's like you know you guys really realize that dream you guys get the opportunity and like i take my hat off to you guys because the fact like you go 10 months out of a year with your with the club team and then turn right back around without even a question to play for the national team like you know sometimes but for the most part without a question that you know to play for the national team and i said like i mean i give i give so many european players you know, so much respect, and like you said, a lot of it's just because of the pride. You know, the pride, the fact that like you know, playing for your country, it means more. I don't know. When you play for Milano, you have uh, I don't know one, two million fans. When yeah. you play for national team, I don't say sixty million fans, but country. all the countries yeah. for you. And you know, uh, it's also a first of all, give back to basketball, let's say, mm -hmm. but also basketball give is giving you something more because the love that we feel i think mm -hmm. both of us from the supporters that are proud of us that we go to national team also when we went uh, uh, after the first your first friend year that we didn't nobody was expecting us to go for the for a window but we took time to go because it was national team yeah. i mean so it was no no question for us no is this is it's different to play for a club or for the national team is is hard to explain it too and like for example last summer when we qualified for the olympics we didn't win a medal yeah. we just qualify you know for certain nations is normal they're always there for us was something special it was almost 20 years we were not there i mean the hype around us is unbelievable mm -hmm. unbelievable and, and this is something that you cannot find in a club doesn't matter which club it is how doesn't matter how many fans it's different it's totally different now I'll stay there for a second i want to know about your your olympic olympic experience obviously it was a little bit different this year because of COVID, and you know weren't allowed to do as many things and as totality as for the experience but just going to the olympics your, your mom went to the olympics in in 84 if i'm not mistaken yes and won a medal so what did that mean not only for you but i guess you know also for her to i guess it had to be a dream come true to see her son you know playing in olympic games as well no uh, it was it was amazing and that being said my goal is to to go to the olympics in los angeles 2028 that will be, you know. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, to, <laughs> to close the circle also with my mom, that will yeah. be something, as Gigi said, very romantic, you yeah. know, like being there after so many years where my mom was will be something amazing. Let's see if, I, if I'm able to do it. But the only thing I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry about the Olympics this summer that I couldn't share with my family, with mm -hmm. my, 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 my closest uh, mm -hmm. friends and and. That was that was the only thing because we were alone. There were no fans. My my family couldn't travel there. My wife couldn't travel there. My parents couldn't travel there. So it was that was the only sad part I would say. But I mean, when you go there, when you're at the Olympic Village, I mean, it's it's amazing. And we were in Japan, so uh, it was totally different. You know, mm. the culture was totally different, and the food was different. How they build the point. I mean, we couldn't stand in the shower. <laughs> The bed were like uh, were made of uh, paper. Uh -huh. It was my after three nights sleeping on that, my back hurt so bad. <laughs> I thought I, I got sick. I, I, I didn't know what was wrong with me. It was terrible. But the Olympic was just you know amazing. And you know when when you when you when you st when there is the, the first celebration, I, I you call it when they they opening ceremony. The, the opening ceremony is you know you go you go in. And the first like 10, 15 minutes, you don't realize where you are. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, without the fans, you kind of get, you know, you're there, you're waiting for the other nation coming out. But, I mean, it was it was amazing. And thinking about, you know, my mom was there. You know, not everybody can say that mom and son mm -hmm. are on, you know, bo both. Olympia. Olympian, so is your, your daughter has a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure, <laughs> but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put, I'm not putting her this pressure on the shoulder. No, absolutely not. Gigi, how did, how did you feel? I mean, I, I know, I don't want to say, I don't want to say jealous. I'm not gonna say that, but I'm gonna say I'm sure you were proud. Mm -hmm. But like, how was it to see like your teammates and your fellow peers, um, you know, to be a part of mm -hmm. it? And then I'm sure Nick, 
rubbed it in a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. I'm sure he. No, <laughs> Nick doesn't know that in 2028 I'll be the coach, <laughs> and, I, and I will cut him. Uh, ruin, uh, final, final, cut, final, final cut. Final cut. <laughs> really final cut. <laughs> no, no. I, um, you know, it was a complicated summer for me because, mm. as I said, I've always been part of national team, and um, I took the decision not to go because I felt that I I couldn't help the way I, I wanted to help. Yeah. Um, so I made a step back. Somebody understood it, somebody didn't understand it. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was, I think, the right decision for me, but for the team also that qualified. And uh, so, you know, I felt a little bit unlucky to have this uh, minor injury in the summer that maybe the best summer the of the last 17 who years. Who was the captain? <laughs> See, incredible. <laughs> 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 this is the only thing I rub a little bit. <laughs> Beside that, I know how much he cares, so I, I never did this. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, but, you know, uh, this is uh, the, the small picture if you think about yourself. Yeah. If you think about the big picture, Italian national team was back at the Olympics and the hype was great. And this was very important for uh, all uh, all nation basketball-wise. And, of course, I have friends there, uh, Nick, and um, I was happy for, for them to enjoy this experience. I was not enjoying it, but... I was glad that because when you go there, you deserve it to yeah. go. And they won the, the they final. So, you know, it's not, they don't, they didn't give them a white card, go to the Olympics. They, yeah. they deserve it. Yeah. So, um, when you deserve it in, in basketball, in sport, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's how sport goes. So, uh, I was happy for them, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. So, we'll, we'll all be looking forward to LA 2028. And, uh, when Gigi is yeah. the coach and, and Nick is that the, how to, how the to leading scorer of the tournament. <laughs> how to make a dream become a nightmare. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> I mean. Now, speaking of dreams, let's let's jump forward to the NBA. Um, both of you guys said, like, when we were younger, Nick, you said you had tapes of Dr. J, and Gigi said, like, you know, that was, you know, a goal, a dream of yours. So when that dream materialized and it happened, you signed that contract and you knew it was real, um, how did you celebrate? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, me. <laughs> in, in my hometown, they still remember. Okay, <laughs> no, really, really. It was that big? No, it was um, <laughs> something official. The mayor of the city gave me uh, something. All, all the city mm -hmm. made a little party. Some thousand people were there, and it was really um, something to be proud of. You know, all the all those people were happy for me, for a personal success, that they felt a little bit also their success because I was coming from the city. And then, basically, I invited all uh, the people that I know in my favorite bar in Olbia, which is on one of from one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And basically, I, I had a toss with uh, all the people, <laughs> so like, I was <laughs> destroyed. I, I didn't finish the night with everybody. <laughs> uh, and at a certain point, that the light somebody turned the light off. The light off. <laughs> but it was incredible. Uh, I know a lot of love. I received a lot of love. It was a night of uh, enjoyment and. Um, really happiness for me, for my family. My dad was so maybe even more happy than me, my brother, my mom. So it was a great night. Um, and after that, I had to go to national team, so I need to recover my, <laughs> <laughs> my, my body and uh, bring my body to, to national team. Well, for me, it was actually a weird summer. I mean, it was so busy because uh, I, I had to, do, uh, to take surgery on my knee. Mm -hmm. I got married. And two days after my wedding, we flew to New Orleans to sign the contract. So that was not actually bad, the honeymoon. honeymoon. Yeah, not a bad honeymoon. I'm, yeah, nah, I mean, <laughs> I, my wife de disagree with that. <laughs> Definitely disagree with that. And so I didn't have the time and also the, the chance to, to, to celebrate it, yeah. you know, because we got married. I, I could barely walk because, yeah. you know, I was really, I was limping. And then we flew immediately to... to uh, to New Orleans, and when we came back after three, four days, uh, I had to keep going on my rehab. Mm -hmm. So it was, but I mean, of course, as a family, we celebrate with dinners and stuff. But I never, I, I didn't have the chance to celebrate as Gigi did. Toast, toast with the, no. uh, the whole time. No, <laughs> you know, one huge mistake was that I was hurrying up because I need to make the bag for national, so I forgot to add the dinner. So it was. Rookie mistake. Uh, straight, straight, mistake. To the, straight to the straight drink. to the drink. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it was no, no. It was you know. Still, I remember uh, everything of the night uh, seriously, and it was beautiful night of happiness and um, happiness with my friends and my um, my city. I have two questions about the the NBA experience. First, what was your? I asked this question to everybody, but what was like your fan moment? Like you know, you're out on the court and you're like, ah, oh, I'm guarding Kobe Bryant, or this is LeBron James, or this is somebody. Did you have like a fan moment, like the first time, and then? Also, when was like your first realization that I'm an NBA? Because the NBA is the pinnacle. It's like the pinnacle of you know of all basketball, the pinnacle of er every profession. So when did you have that realization? Like, 
oh, I'm an NBA player. Like, did you did that ever like have that, like that aha moment? Your money? Uh, well, the fan moment. Probably the first time I played against uh, is either Steph Curry or LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Probably Steph Curry for how good he played. Mm -hmm. I was. Well, I think he scored 38 that game. He won easy. And LeBron James for how just physically big yeah. is like he, you know you know it, but when you see it live, I mean, it's just unreal. And he was the only player to give me the feeling that he has a on-off switch. Mm -hmm. For three for three quarters, was off. At one point, say, you know, guys, we I I want to win the game. Bam, 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 bam. It was nothing we could do. And uh, I realized I was an NBA player uh, the, at the first official game, um, game one of the regular season in mm -hmm. Toronto, mm -hmm. when they put me in. Uh, I actually had uh, a good game, but the moment I stepped in, I sub, I sub, I sub in. That was the moment I said, "Okay, I'm an NBA player." Yeah. I, um, the fun moment for sure. My first friendly game because I was against Miami Heat, uh, and you watch uh, the other side of the half court. Half court game was LeBron, Ray Allen, uh, Dion Wade, uh, Chris Bosh. I say, "What am I doing here?" You know, uh, <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> That's a really good question. No, no, really, it's uh, uh, really, really, where I'm at. Um, it was in yes, it was tough to really to focus on the game because to okay to step in the arena to have my jersey the jersey with my name uh, on the Pistons jersey was mm -hmm. uh, really moving moments. Um, okay, then when I started playing a little bit, I never felt comfortable on the court, maybe because I was willing to show a lot, um, the minutes were not there, blah, blah. Maybe in Boston, I felt when I felt like an NBA player that I was playing normal and I was mm -hmm. having normal minutes and I was feeling part of the locker room also. Yeah. That moment I said, okay, ah, so I'm a, I'm in an NBA player, but mm -hmm. this uh, was almost after two years. So, um, but when this moment happened, it's really incredible. You step, uh, you, you stop for one second, you sit and you, you watch yourself in the locker room with the everything of the NBA that is special for how many things that uh, there are with the uh, with the logos of uh, in everything you know on on the plane of the detroit pistons i remember it was the lo detroit pistons logo on the seat but it was you know something those yeah. details that make you feel in a, yeah. a kid in this land uh, like yes yes yeah. and uh, so this moment to say wow wow now i'm curious also um because as an american as a foreign player playing overseas people are always talking about the culture of europe the culture of italy now, for birth for you guys, you guys, Gigi, you know, you left Rome to go to the NBA. So it was like your first time really leaving Italy. What type of like strange or, you know, adaptation did you have to, to American culture? And then was there something that like that you stuck out that was like that like you were like, oh, man, like I love going to Wendy's or I love going to a certain place or something that stuck out to you that like you had no idea? Um, maybe first shock was um – um, how people was <laughs> it's funny how people were strictly respecting the rules in the streets uh, because I was coming from Rome and uh, Rome is you know uh, you survive in the traffic Istanbul but I was not coming from Istanbul so so they I took like tickets uh, in the first uh, and I was scared because the police you know they turn on the the lights and yeah. they pull you over so you feel like guilty and say okay only speed what what's what's the problem okay I will pay the tickets but this was something uh, and then I saw that everybody was going in the highway on everybody on same uh, same speed uh, respecting rules. say okay we need to adapt <laughs> and I did it pre pretty fast uh, and then I remember going to dinner very very early uh, like 6 6 30 for us is very it's very early to go to dinner I remember I went out from the movie si uh, theater at 9 15 and the best steakhouse was closed already and say <laughs> these little things there is nothing yeah. huge but yeah. you need to you need to adapt exactly. uh, but I like what I liked is the efficiency basically everywhere okay for sure in the nba um, organization but also in every office in every every errands that you need to run people usually is very very efficient they take proud of this and these i liked it a lot well for me having my mom come from nebraska yeah. i kind of knew already the the american culture even though nebraska is pretty different than Lu louisiana yeah, yeah. um I really, we like it. We like it there. I mean, my wife and I. And uh, the only maybe two things we really didn't enjoy was the weather, because in mm -hmm. Louisiana it's terrible. I mean, it's so humid. 
and uh, it was good. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and the uh, uh, the pace they have. Yeah, they are so slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the car. I mean, I mean, they are so <laughs> slow. I mean, let's go, guys. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. You go in somewhere and you order something. It takes five hours, mm -hmm. but. Beside that, it was not nothing, nothing difficult to do. And I was, uh, I spent already two years in Germany, two years in Turkey, yeah. so I had to adapt already to different culture. I mean, once you I find, I think knowing the language, this helps. No, you this helps you a lot. And you know, once you find your two, three, four spots, you're good. Yeah. You know, then you explore. But you know, once you have your, and we found them pretty, pretty fast. So it was, it was, it was easy. Nick, did you ask Gigi for advice? Because Gigi was kind of like the, the trailblazer for, for you. He was kind of the pioneer, you know, to go to the NBA. So when, you, when you're making your decision, did you call Gigi and say, hey, Gigi, you know, uh, do you have any advice for me? Uh, actually not, but not, not because of Gigi. No, not yeah, because yeah. of Gigi. Because no, I, I, no, but uh, now is the last moment, the last serious moment with Gigi. After we're going <laughs> to start making fun of each other. <laughs> but... Um, uh, I wanted to be my decision because I was in a very good position with Fener. They offered me a, 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 a new contract in Fener, a very good Did contract. They? Eh? Really? Did they? And, and you were not part of the team after. <laughs> I was like, either me or Gigi. So you, you, immediately, <laughs> you. Behind the scenes, Don't worry, uh, we got Gigi yes. immediately. And, uh, and so uh, I was, it wasn't that easy, yeah. the, 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 the choice. You know, even though on one side there was NBA. And, and so I wanted to be my decision. I didn't want to to listen to somebody else, but this also it, it was my parents, it was my wife. It wanted, I wanted it to be my decision, so that I could live with it yeah. after, you know, because you never know how it goes. Go. And uh, I remember when I picked this decision, I, I walk out of the the bedroom. I was in the bedroom after surgery, so I was laying down on the bed, and uh, I said to my wife and to my parents, "Okay, we are going to we're going to Louisiana to New Orleans." Yeah. And, but no, I didn't ask. And then after, yes, you know, we, we talked how it was, what to expect. Uh, but, you know, to be fair, Gigi really helped me a lot in my first period in, in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. I actually, I was, I was at your place for like a couple of weeks at the beginning. So oh, we're going to talk about that. I want to get to that. Okay. No, <laughs> so, but not for the NBA, no. Uh, a question I have is, um, what were you more nervous for or excited for? Your first NBA game, your first national team game, or if you remember back then, your first EuroLeague game? First NBA check? Or NBA game. <laughs> my, I was honestly way mo most nervous for my first game as a pro in really? second division really? against Pistoia. I remember my first basket. It was a cut on the baseline, a layup. Very sad layup, normal, very normal. Like I was sprinting around, yeah, like this, enjoy. <laughs> I was, but because who you know, is this kid? <laughs> no, really. Then, what? I remember somebody wrote an article about it. Like we have this kid, like Cocky. enjoying. <laughs> no, but I was really, I was so happy that I scored my first basket. So that was the the, the most nervous moment of my career for mm -hmm. sure. You did. No, I, I remember the first moment that I went um, on the court in uh, Serie A. Uh, it was the last seconds of a game, last 39 seconds against uh, Scalini Peso, Alfonso Do Ford was there, uh, Georgievich was, I think, his second last year of career. But, you know, you go there, you, are s you sit on the, uh, on the sub, and your, your heart is already <laughs> pumping like you are yes, sprinting yes, for yes. From 10 minutes. So <laughs> the, the mouth is dry. <laughs> yes, yes, it's like this, it's I like this. <laughs> you st still need to step on the court. The emotion was big. And then, um, no, an NBA, no, really, I was, you know, it was okay. For sure it was moving, it was, you know, some, something different, but never as the first one as a kid. Uh, maybe just because you're a kid and, you know, you control the emotions less maybe, but my real first time was oof, was almost a nightmare because sometimes you dream when you your legs are shaking. That's, mm -hmm. that's exactly how it was. Now we're going to jump forward to EuroLeague. Um, Gigi, you can take a break. Me and me and uh, the freak, the freak city guys are gonna gonna talk. Oh yeah, um, I love it. <laughs> what what makes cause we we both spend time in Bamberg um, for people that don't know. Um, what makes Bamberg such a special place? And and for you that that it was almost a time for you to how would you say it kind of 
Three reset points. Your, reset your career. You know, you coming from Milan, you know, you, you had some difficulties and, you know, you went to Bamberg and you thrived there. So what was about Bamberg, first of all, that made it, made you, give you the ability to thrive there and what makes it such a, a special place, Bamberg, Creek City? Well, Bamberg actually really changed my life. Yeah. Like completely on and off the court. Yeah. Uh, on the court, um, I mean, they had a project. They had people they could, you know, run this project because it was not just uh, the coach but it was also the organization behind them uh also the strength conditioning coach the team they built and the fact that you know we were playing Euroleague without a lot of pressure because when you're Bamberg you don't have a lot of pressure when you play, play Euroleague but at the same time we almost made the playoff the first year right away and it was the old uh, format of Euroleague and um for me, on the court, what made it special was, you know, the people. The people in the Bamberg organization. Now, they are all spread around the world. And uh, and off the court, you know, I met my wife there. And I met a lot of friends. I still... I, I Whenever I have the chance in summer, I spend one or two days in Bamberg. I go I go back there, even though it's a very small city. Yeah. It has something special. What, what made you want to... And I'm going to ask Gigi the same question later, because he... Did something similar in Turkey about, but what made you want to get immersed into the to the culture there, the German culture? Because you eventually learned the language, like yeah. you said, you met your wife, you were, were meeting friends, you know, at such a young age. When most people, when they're abroad, they're staying in their apartments, they're playing PlayStation or Xbox, they're not leaving. So, what made you want to get so much immersed in the culture there? Well, two things. Uh, I don't know why, but I always wanted to learn German, mm -hmm. and I never had the chance. I never studied in in school. And so I start taking classes, even though I just take, took 10 hours of uh, German classes, uh, my first year. I met my wife my second year in yeah. Bamberg. And uh, I became very close with my German teacher, who is an Italian, is Italian, and he was, you know, uh, a teacher in the university back then. And um, I just want to learn the, 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 the language. And honestly, the people there, are s they were great with me. So it was very easy to embrace the culture. It was very easy to feel a part of the city, even though, you know, you know, you, you play in Bamberg, so you yeah. know how they, they, they live yeah. for the team, yeah. you know, and you, you go in the, in the gym, doesn't matter if you play your league or you play uh, the domestic league, they are always there Sport. supporting you. Then we had also this thing that after your league games, oh, and maybe also domestically, we had the chance to go and eat upstairs with the fans the it wasn't mandatory but you know in germ like in detroit they were closing the restaurant at nine in bamberg they closed the restaurant at six you need to eat dinner at 5 p.m <laughs> and so we were all going there and there was also another chance you know to to meet the people from bamberg and you know to to feel part of the city and and the other thing is honestly as a basketball player when basketball works Everything else. Everything else is is fine. It doesn't. You can be in the most beautiful city in the yeah. world. You can be in New York. You can be in, but you can be in Milan. But if basketball doesn't work, you don't enjoy life. Yeah. And for me, back then, basketball was so easy. We were having fun. We were going around. We I think we lost just to Real Madrid at home, mm -hmm. or se maybe you won. You won against us with the last shot. Wait, which is, we lost just against you. Yeah. And reverse yeah, yeah, reverse. Yes, the reverse autobahn. <laughs> And then me and Thais, we didn't switch. <laughs> Still remember. It was, a, it was a great screen, that's why. But exactly, exactly. <laughs> I was okay. a bad defender on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's true. All true. <laughs> everything true. When it's true, it's true. And uh, so we were really enjoying it. And so everything else came very easy. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I like, like about the Bamberg program, you look about all the players that kind of came through there. And you look at it like not only had, are we having success in the EuroLeague, but even in the NBA with Wanamaker, with Thais. Yeah. With so many different players with Miller, you know, Miller. Like their program. I think I think they don't get the, as much credit, you know, as they as they deserve as a whole. I mean, because now obviously they're not in the Euro League, but I yeah. think they don't get as much credit as a whole. But what about Andrea Trinkiti? Me, he was my first coach. He <laughs> he he brought me to Europe. He's the main reason I, I'm here. You know, here today. Um, you know, but speak a little bit about him as well. I mean, I I have a special relationship with Andrea. Uh, as you know, he changed he changed my career. You know, he gave me the chance to take responsibility, real real responsibilities on the court. He put me in the middle of his project, and it, it worked out for both of us. And um, I mean, Andrea, I believe is one of the the best basketball minds we have in in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I was I really enjoy playing for him, for him, and I really like how he he, he sees basketball. And uh, 
I mean, there is not much to say. I mean, I believe the results uh, speak for themselves, you know, for what he, what, what he have done in the past years, you know, also with Bayern last year, you know, going one game away from Final Four. I mean, if you think about it, something huge. Yeah. Like, where was Bayern three, four years ago? Absolutely. And um, so, I mean, I was just lucky to be part of that group. And, you know, being coached from Andrea was, of course, a huge, 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 huge part. This episode is brought to you by Airness. Airness is the main basketball destination in Europe with stores all over Italy, including the largest basketball store in Europe located in Milan. It's a place you would definitely want to visit if you're in town. They're opening a store very soon in Paris. You can also go to airness.eu as they deliver all over Europe. That is A-I-R-N-E-S-S dot E-U. At Airness, you can find all basketball-related products from the latest sneakers, basketball shoes, jersey, apparel, and accessories for men, women, and kids. The Airness store in Milan is actually where I go to get my shoes since I can find the sizes and releases that I won't find anywhere else. Visit one of their stores or visit airness.eu to see their full range of products. You can always follow them on Instagram with their username at Airness for all the latest news. Now back to the episode. Uh, Gigi, you, you were leaving the NBA um, and had the opportunity to, to join Fenerbahce. Now this is Fenerbahce. In the beginning of the the whole project with Robinovich, I think this was the second year, and you were you know one of the first players to one of their first big signings. Um, what was it about Fenerbahce? What was it about Coach Robinovich that that I'm sure you had other options. I'm sure you had opportunities maybe to come back to Italy and other places. But what was it about that project, um, you know, and that team that made you want to you know sign there and play there? I think uh, after two years, you know. Uh, uh, a lot of work and a lot of uh, struggle in finding um, a role in NBA. Uh, I was drawn by uh, such an incredible coach that chose you to be part of uh, an important project mm -hmm. as very much. Um, you know, they were I was lucky enough to, to have different option, but when I saw that Obradovic was calling me for Fenerbahce, a very ambitious club that won just had their fir first Final Four and they wanted to, to win. Uh, Euroleague, and I when, when was never part of a um, Euroleague team on high level. I played with the Siena, with Rome, but um, we were not competing for, uh, to win. Um, it was pretty pretty easy as a choice. Um, and then, of course, we met because, you know, I was taking a big decision, and I wanted to meet him, and Im immediately we found a bound. We didn't talk much, but yeah. we I understood that we were talking the same language on uh, about basketball, about work, about the daily approach to work. Uh, and uh, I remember he told me like uh, everything is a matter of uh, respect um, and to be loyal to each other in the team. And this was, you know, coming from two years where everybody is <laughs> most of the time is thinking about uh, his own interest, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, playing his minutes, uh, scoring his basket because I had this opportunity, this um, experience. Um, and all, all this uh, motivation pushed me, pushed me hard in that direction. And uh, you know, you feel it from inside. Uh, I, had, I had opportunity to come to Seska also, and that was the doubt was big because Seska is, is Seska. But uh, you my didn't call me. Huh? I didn't know you uh, <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> uh, but um, but you know, you I, th I felt the inside uh, that mm. I was ready this season. I'm I'm glad I made the, the choice. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was the, the right choice. I mean, the success that you had, guys had, which we'll, we'll speak about a little bit later, but. Nick eventually follows you to... to like always. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's his career, you know, following me. Yeah. Chasing I me. I sent you Chasing there me. to <laughs> check the situation, yeah. if you, it, and then I come, you, you know? You, you lay the groundwork and you build everything Milan up. the same, it. NBA yeah. the same, national then, team. Maybe. And then Nick comes. But my, my question is, um, you know, obviously the Fenerbahce fans are very passionate. You know, they, they care about their team. They're, you know, they're, they're one of the best atmospheres ever. Mm -hmm. So the first time you're in Oka Arena and you feel that, mm -hmm. it's different playing against it. But when you're there and you feel it, what what is that feeling like? What does that feel like? You know, to have that wave of fans, that amount of support behind you. It's, uh, you know, okay, I knew that it was something big, but I didn't know that it was such a big thing, especially because Istanbul is a 20 million city yeah. and the fans are everywhere. I was going everywhere and with Nick and they, they knew us in every restaurant, in every square of the city. They and we always skip the line. Huh? <laughs> That's a great line. thing. <laughs> you know, yeah, we're, hey, Gigi, we, we skip the line. After a while, you probably started doing it on purpose. Yeah, no, no, like, no, uh, no. <laughs> never think of it. As it. But I mean, when we were going to Peck's yeah, restaurant, it was yeah, nice yeah. to go. You know, I need to take advantage <laughs> of it. In five years, nobody will remember me. So <laughs> <laughs> Think of it as now. <laughs> yeah, take advantage. 
<laughs> so, but you know, to play with the fans, it, it give you, you know, there is a moment of the game that maybe you're tired. It, they give you that extra boost yeah. of energy that you then never feel tired and you feel so excited to 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 play for them. And uh, we were talking b before with Nick. Uh, uh, I like when players like needed to embrace the atmosphere and the culture of the place where you play because it make you it push you to give you a little bit more because yeah. you understand where we are. You first of all we have unique uh, opportunities in our life to live uh, in a different country, in different world, to new culture. And to new culture is not to go and play, stay in the hotel and uh, stay in play uh, playing for a play uh, PlayStation at home. Uh, it's to you know to know the people, to know the language, to know the places. And uh, um, I liked a lot. To I was very drawn from Istanbul, regardless. Yeah. The, the you were very world. immersed in the culture. You yes, learned the language. So you would do speaking engagements. I tried. I tried, and I and, and I loved it. I loved it. And uh, actually, also the fans loved it because they mm, you know it, it's not common to do this. Uh, but I really liked it because I think now I'm a different person and I want to believe a little bit better person because there is also a Nick uh, <laughs> don't have to worst <laughs> worst is difficult eh? <laughs> worst is difficult on this. <laughs> but I, uh, I recommend this for example Dino Mitoglu now is learning Italian yeah. I, and I told him it's gonna be tough at the beginning but do it keep yeah. it up because it's gonna be great for you now I just want to summarize what you guys did there I mean Gigi was there a little bit longer but five consecutive final fours the EuroLeague title three Turkish Cups three Turkish League Championships um, President Cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about President Cup. <laughs> the President Cup. Um, uh, see, see, see. But how would you, you know, characterize your, your time there? How would you? Uh, you know, it was also a turning point for my career because at that moment I, I had 10 years in uh, Serie A, uh, winning the VP but never a title, like an important player. NBA fighting for my spot but never being uh, an important player for any other teams. So at that moment of my career, I wanted I wanted to win something because that's mm -hmm. the ultimate goal, you know. You <laughs> you, can, you know better than anybody. So Fenerbahce made me a winner player, or mm -hmm. a player that won uh, something. So uh, to be part of that uh, project or that team, uh, you know, it changed my career. After that career, I was finally a player that could help also teams winning. And I'm glad that also Milano called me after Fenerbahce for the same goal, and that uh, I take out of pride in this. So um, you know, uh, I have. I give a lot of credit and I own a lot to Obradovic, to Gerardini, to all my teammates and coaches and the fans, of course, that we we achieved so much uh, together in those five years. For me, it was, uh, you know, was uh, the, the the natural choice to do when to, to go to Fenerbahce because, you know, as you said, I was in Milan with, you know, a different role and then I uh, go to Bamberg and, you know, you start feeling, you yeah. know, you start taste how good it Euroleague is you know when you are really part of it and then I had the chance to go to the NBA but then I talked to Obradovic and you know go to it was then after talking to Obradovic it was very easy to, to yeah, go yeah. to Fener you know I don't really know if you ever had the chance to talk to yeah, Zeliko yeah, yeah. but I mean you talk to him five minutes you're ready yeah. to fight for him yeah, and yeah, throw yourself in the, yeah, yeah. To <laughs> throw yourself in the fire and um, those two years where you know, it's different to play EuroLeague just to play. It's the other thing to play EuroLeague to win it. Mm -hmm. And this is a mindset you you cannot have just the last two months. You have to have it from the very beginning. Absolutely. And uh, with a coach like Zeliko, I remember first game in EuroLeague, we go to Malaga, and Malaga won EuroCup. So it was a kind of European Super Cup because Fener, the year before I got there, they won the EuroLeague, and Malaga won the EuroCup. So, you know, the two winning teams – facing each other and we lost in Malaga probably I had my worst game in in Euroleague no, yeah, in way, way more no no that was very no, bad no, no. and so the day after we traveled back uh, to Istanbul we were not flying char uh, private private flight we got home pretty late and Zeliko made us uh, watch the game and after we practiced and we finished practice around 2 a.m. yeah 130 something that was my first like welcome card welcome to Fenerbahce, welcome yeah. to Fenerbahce. I was like my like that but moment I, I thought the season started now yeah, yes yeah. but the <laughs> thing is I didn't feel like oh my goodness I was you know okay let's go yeah you know like it wasn't like I felt like yes a punishment but a punishment like to make you understand why we're what we're fighting for and you know being there winning being able to win unfortunately we, we're not able to win the EuroLeague uh, but, you know, going to Final Four is still a great achievement because, you know, for how Final Four are made, you know, everything can happen in yeah. that weekend. So it was amazing. in the weekend in Belgrade, the first Final Four I, 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 I was in, it was, it was just amazing. 
and uh, you know it changes also your mindset and also how you prepare, also how you approach certain games, and uh, you know it was it was it was amazing. I want to turn to the present now. Um, up to last year, it's been some time before since the Italian team has really had a huge presence in Euroleague. Um, we were able to, you know, do that last year. But I want to skip ahead. A I mean, we'll go back a little bit. When you heard that Edera was taking the job in Milan, as Italian players that, like I said, had been to the, you know, seen the heights of Italian basketball, had been through it. What were your initial thoughts during that time? You know, it was something huge for uh, not only basketball in Italy, I think, because Italy is so much respected from uh, all the sports. Um, you know, uh, Milano in the last. I don't know how many years they try to do things seriously with uh, great coaches, great players, but somehow, different reason, I was not here, so I, I cannot judge, but didn't uh, bring Milano to that level. Um, but when Ettore signed, okay, so now this is the, the moment yeah. that they, they want to maybe <laughs> to do it that the last try, you know, yeah, because yeah, yeah. if you cannot do it with Ettore with his career, um, you will never do it. So. Uh, I knew that Milano was going to be, uh, you know, a, tif a tough team to to play against because uh, he's uh, one more time, Ettore uh, career speaks in, speaks himself. Mm -hmm. So the first year of Ettore was still in uh, Fenerbahce, and I remember uh, with Fener we lost in Milano, and and I had uh, the true experience that it was going to be a, a tough team to play against. Yes. Yeah. What about you, Nick? Just. I mean, I had uh, I had Ettore in national team, and I, I I could see how how he was working, and then of course his career speak for for itself. I mean, I I believe this is perfect combination. You know, you have on one side Armani and his group, you know, being the owner of the team, and then make the team run from uh, from from Ettore, who knows how to do it, and uh, with his experience, with his career. I mean, what he what he have done, what he has done is it goes beyond to me because i experienced milan before yeah. it goes beyond beyond winning a title then of course winning a title is what you know is like okay I, you know i did it and i won the title yeah. it's something that yeah, acknowledge you you know but what he have d what he has done here changing the culture completely absolutely making this one of the best organization is n is is not just about money because there are a lot of teams that have the money milan had money before but they were not like this. We were not like this because mm -hmm. I was here. And, you know, now when we go and play on the road, like I remember when I was in Milan and we were going to Barcelona and we eventually won, we were like, oh, a miracle. Mm -hmm. Now you go to Barcelona and you know that you can win. Like, and if you lose, you're like, oh, we didn't play well. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like you go everywhere. Change the status of the Completely. Game. And Expe expectations are different. Expectation, but the expectation – they were always there, I believe, the expectation. Yeah. The thing, that w the status was not there, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the mentality wasn't there. The culture wasn't there. The preparation the, the wasn't there. The respect also from uh, The others. respect, of course, of course. But, I mean, they also, they also had big coaches b b back then. They also had big players. Something was missing, and I believe Ettore brought it, you mm -hmm. know? And, you know, hopefully we are able to, to do something Hopefully. something something nice uh, you know it depends on Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> like always, like the president cup <laughs> of course <laughs> what does it mean for after you know so much time abroad for both of you guys what does it mean to return back home to, to Italy to play to have opportunity for your for your parents to see you play to you know for your friends and the family after being away what does that what does that mean for you guys to me it's nice to be here um, cuz you know i left in a certain way and i came back uh, come, came back in another way so it's also you know a chance for me to say uh, you know I, I was right leaving i was right to believe in myself mm -hmm. and right to be cocky also. <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> cannot talk about it cuz you need to be a little bit you know you need to believe in yourself and uh, but of course it, to me now to be in italy to play for the national team in summer you know is really I feel really part of it, you know, it's like, for me, sometimes there is all, almost a little bit more pressure when we play domestic league, yeah. the yearly, you know what I mean, as an Italian, because yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to lose against anybody no. in the Italian league, you know, you, you know, when we played the Italian cup, it was, you know, you want to win it, yeah. you know, and um, it's nice, it's nice to, it's nice to be here and to play in your country in front of, you know, a lot of people you know.
for you, Gigi? No, it's an added value for sure. But um, I, I made the choice not because I wanted to be back in Italy. Because yeah. I thought Milano was an incredible opportunity for me to keep on being on, on a high level, with competing for winning and, uh, and so on. Uh, but to be in Italy, of, co of course, in a normal world, uh, people can come often to visit your family. But we experienced COVID last year. This year, a little bit uh, better. Um, but you know, it's, it's in Milan is such an incredible city. Offer you so much, and uh, it's uh, after many years uh, abroad, which I loved. Um, it's good to be to be in Italy and to just speak your own language. Sometimes that it's, it's uh, you know it's a uh, it's a good feeling. Yeah, also to represent an Italian teams, and that was something that I was missing in my career to win with an Italian teams. So a lot of point that um, you know. Uh, push me in this direction, and um, I'm glad this opportunity came. I'm going to knock on wood. We uh, we won the cup. Mm. You know, we experienced that, but we've yet to win. Kyle, Kyle is a very dangerous player. Well, like I, what you're doing right I, now is I not really answer, Italian. Not no. I, I mean, know, what's out, Kyle? <laughs> what's out? <laughs> I have to ask, but we won the cup. Okay, okay. But we haven't won uh -huh. uh, yeah. yet. A championship, oh, okay. a Euro League, or uh, a Italian Cup. If domestic I knew, league if I knew it, I wasn't <laughs> coming on this podcast. I mean, this. No, no. I promise you, it's a good question. What would it mean? Because, like I said, you guys are Italian, and yes, I, I circle back. Gigi, you you won the cup in, in two thousand four with. Well, you seen Siena? Yes, you were part of yes, the young but team. Yes. But, yeah, but you were but you were part of the team. Mm -hmm. What would it mean for the organization for Milan to win a, a Euro League title? And or to win uh, an Italian Cup. What just just what would it mean? Well, I experienced the Italian Championship and it was amazing, okay. amazing. It was really amazing. Um, to win your league is. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't know what it means. No, really about no, it. really, I doesn't know. <laughs> really, really, I doesn't know, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know, and he's. I don't want to even think about it. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to even think about it, you know. Me either, me either. My, my wife all the time, she asks me, and this may be something stupid, but I don't know why I'm saying this, but she asks me all the time about the Final Four. Echo. All no, the no, time. No, no, but uh, this is a, a wife, yo, a wife yo, mistake. Yo, yeah, and she asks him, she's like, oh, the Final Four this, the Final Four here. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't talk about the Final Four till we get to the Final uh, Four. You spoil that, <laughs> you spoil that a real bit. I mean, yeah, Kai, with there, you is a little bit no, different. No, 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 <laughs> I mean, you have how many, yeah. how many Final Four in a row? Yeah, 24? How many, how many Final this Four is, you This is what I always say. She's always like, oh, we, even in the playoffs, she's like, oh, we got to do this. I'm like, no, like, I, I run out the room and I'm like, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this. So I, I understand. I get what she's saying. So, but it's, they don't want to even think about it. Yeah. I just, yeah. it's, it's too big to yeah. think about it. And I never won EuroLeague. So for me, it's also, you yeah. know, I don't want to even, uh, can we change topic? Yeah. Thank yeah. You. So we're going to get to some some other interesting topics. Um, we're going to talk more about off the court. Um, first, I'm going to pull this, no, this no. out. Kyle, 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 please, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do it. Ding dong. No, I <laughs> Gigi, for people that don't know, oh. Gigi is a is an author. Watch a surprise. A best, a best, let's, let's say best-selling author. <laughs> you know, Oscar Wilde colleague. Yeah, exactly. Call me how you want. He's he's up there with he's up there with the greats. Um, so first of all, um, I want to know what went into the process of you writing the book, um, and, <laughs> and and afterwards, <laughs> Nick, Nick can give your uh, his review <laughs> of the book. No, I I um, I ask uh, Nick to also to describe the position on when you were taking the review of the book. <laughs> uh, no, you know it was, you know I like to read a lot and. Um, some people, believe it or not, <laughs> ask me <laughs> to, uh, to write a book, and I was always saying, no, I will do it eventually at the end of the career because you made a point and you talk about what happened. And uh, But we found this way, and they told me, at the end of the career, nobody will <laughs> remember, remember you <laughs> because it's you're only downhill. So do it in a moment that you're still a, a certain non-player. Uh, we found uh, a way to, to talk about my career, my life, but also a lot of behind the scenes talking through object. Every chapter is an object. And uh, I don't know, talking about guitar, I talk my about my hobbies, talking about the Euroleague trophy. I talk about uh, the first two seasons in uh, Istanbul. Uh, it's a way, it was a way to tell my story, to share my values. And um, I spoke also about you, did I? Yes, only uh, when I go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> That, th that <laughs> is I think our relationship life. was a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a it was an experience to write, uh, to to see the books in the uh, bookstores when I go, to present it, to, to you know to have people that tag me on uh, on Instagram that 
uh, read it and liked it and uh, maybe saw something in the book that I didn't want to emphasize, but they they appreciate it a lot mm -hmm. because every book you read it with your own eyes and you read it with your own ex experience. So it's a jo every book is a journey. And there was, you know, I was free to do it and um, we found a way to, to do it in an organic and um, uh, spontaneous way. Let's say. Nick, did we uh, expect for you to, uh, to write a book? I have the title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is Melly's mentality. <laughs> Melly's <laughs> mentality. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. No, 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 yes, yes, no, 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 I don't think. I don't think. I really don't think so. I don't. No. no. He has nothing to say. No, exactly. No. I agree. I don't. I have nothing to say. Is this Gigi just the first of a series? We are we no, 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 <laughs> hopefully not. Please, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> one is way more than enough. Are we expecting more? Please. Next one is gonna be a version, fantasy version, yeah. like with dragons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your life is a fantasy version of. Um, so now I'm gonna have a, a few few uh, questions, off court questions, um, and then we'll wrap it up. I know I kept you guys here long enough, and I know it's uh, really a pleasure. Know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you, Kyle, not with Gigi. But I mean, we're with each other every day, so I mean, I know. <laughs> um, both of you, both of you are our parents. Both of you are girl dads. Um, <laughs> Gigi, Gigi, a little bit newer, <laughs> but but uh, Nick, you're more experienced. Your daughter just turned one. one. Um, Gigi, you're, you're, you know, coming around, coming around there, but, um, how has parenthood changed you and how has being a girl dad changed you as well? Well, to me, being a dad, uh, was my biggest dream above everything else, above playing the NBA to become a dad was my life goal. And I always, I don't know why I, I always thought that I had, uh, I had, uh, boys. I don't know why, because my, probably my family are all, all boys and I, I don't know. And then when Matilde born, it was just, and now is I'm completely in love and completely lost. And it's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And I cannot wait to see what life is gonna, is gonna bring us. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, every day is a new, a new experience and something new, something different you learn. And it changed your life and also put everything in perspective. So that's also something very, very nice. For you, Gigi, you're the almost brand yes. new, basically it's brand new rookie father. Dad. Yeah, rookie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, it's such uh, words, I cannot describe the feeling. Uh, oh, still, if now, you know, she's uh, two months old, so yeah. she doesn't interact a lot. Um, but just looking at her that she's sleeping, she's fine. It, it make you feel in the right moment on her in the right uh, space. Uh, you want to be there and that's it. And you want to that she's uh, good and when she's good, you're good. And no matter what happened, um, you know, and this also, uh, I feel like because also this, um, brought me even closer to Chiara, my wife, mm -hmm. and we are living this, um, experience in a incredible uh, with incredible emotions every day and we are we feel very we don't want to have details <laughs> no no i mean don't we don't, don't want to have details yeah, of your incredible <laughs> emotions yeah. i mean very close yeah, we don't want to have details i'm Thank romantic you. you are a pervert <laughs> So it's really, it's new emotion, new emotion that, uh, that everybody told me, ah, you will see, you will see, you will see. But then now that I'm feeling it, still I cannot really put it in, uh, in words, the, the emotions and the closeness. And he wrote a book. <laughs> Think about it. Think <laughs> about it. He wrote a book and he cannot put it in words. <laughs> Think about it. No, because basketball you can put in words. You know, being father no, is I'm joking. I agree with you. Now we're going to go to our kind of like quick, quicker questions um, for either one of you your favorite retired EuroLeague player of all time? I don't want to say present, but favorite. Bodhi Roga. Tough, uh, really tough. Uh, favorite retired EuroLeague player? Uh, super tough. I have to be. I really know. I don't know. I don't know. I would say because uh, I'm, I'm friend with him. The two of is there are many, but Bodhi Roga. First one, <laughs> I would say because we are friends, the Gianluca Basile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can go to dinner with anybody in the history of mankind, who would it be? Not Gigi. You cannot say me. Yeah. <laughs> no, not Gigi. <laughs> they, you know, I'm part of his. Uh, Michelangelo. Michelangelo. Why? I read a lot about him, and uh, I think as you know, one of those human beings that they throw it 
an alien throw it in the in the water and say, hey, give a little, speed mm -hmm. up the, the world a little bit because they need somebody to to push them in that direction. I have no idea. Kyle, you should tell me before at least. I no, have to think about it. Uh, <laughs> you know why you cannot write a book? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like... Uh, uh, to Karl Marx. Din no, Karl Marx. no, I would like to spend dinner with a friend that I lost. Okay. Uh, six, seven years ago, right. I would like to have uh, this chance to to spend dinner with him. That's, uh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Rest in peace, too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Your favorite place to go to in Milan? Non restaurant. I mean, home with home. my <laughs> wife and Matilde. I mean, that's, that's the great place answer, to be. Great answer. That's the place to be. That's the place <laughs> to be. Tell us the truth. No, that's the place to be. Um, Beside that, um, where do I like to go? <laughs> Usually I go to <laughs> get groceries. <laughs> this is what, <laughs> <laughs> what I have to do. <laughs> uh, not restaurants, huh? Not, not restaurants. Uh, I like I like a lot um, uh, Arco della Pace, close uh -huh. to San Parco Sempione. Mm -hmm. You did it? Yes, I was about to say that in Parco Sempione, or there is a... Um, uh, bookstore uh, uh, I love a lot when I go there it's my moment of peace it's go go library and uh, I found a new one very nice Scatola Lilla mm -hmm. I would suggest they it. give you discount uh, if you say yes. their names or 10% or you if you say GG <laughs> GG 10 is, is the your, code is your book in there no, no it's, a, it's a serious <laughs> library because it's an so independent so this is why you go to the library you're uh, do you have my book today <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> every day to ask you know about author right <laughs> <laughs> I can go I can go I'm waiting they recognize me, but still. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the subject, favorite book? Uh, Il Conte di Monte Cristo. I don't know the, the English. Uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. No, no, not the Count. No, not the Count. <laughs> si. oh, okay, Writer? Uh, Dumas. Bravo. Dumas. Dumas. Dumas is the Dumas. Um, who told you to read that book? Not you. Me. No. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> That is a great book. You uh, see how Gigi works? <laughs> he takes he takes <laughs> credit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> like forgot, forgot. Who tell you this? <laughs> and I cannot say, no, it's not you. Like I, uh, I would say Shantaram. Shantaram is I the book Shantaram. that, uh, mm -hmm. 1,000 pages that usually I don't like, but I really say, that's it. It's it was amazing, yes. It was amazing. I thought you were saying, Gioco come suona. I mean, that, that's I a great opportunity. I, I, mean, I, I, wrote, I wrote it. I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't read it. Bravo. Don't read it. <laughs> trust me. Don't read it. Trust me. Trust me. Don't read it. <laughs> Nick, I'm not sure if you play an instrument, but I know Gigi is, you know, multi-talented in, in different instruments. Um, but your guitar, favorite song for you to play on your guitar? <laughs> happy uh, birthday. Guitar is not easy, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> for my skills. Uh, for your yeah. skills, it's very difficult. Um, oh, dear. Mm. Prepare yourself, guy. Tears in Heaven, very, sad, very sad song by mm -hmm. Eric Clapton, but very fun and... If you when I play it, you think oh, it must be super good, but <laughs> I'm not. I know very well that song. <laughs> you, you just mastered one song. <laughs> yes, I have like ten pieces. I can go on the streets on the corner and <laughs> asking for coins, and that'd be great. You Nick, you play any instruments? No, I don't play anything. Beatbox, no, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. No the bell singing. No, no I'm <laughs> disaster. Um, before I'm gonna do it now. Let's do it now. I have a question. I want to know if these hairstyles are gonna come back. Is the man bun going to come back or the curly afro? <laughs> Impossible. No way. No, no chance. No, for me, no. I'm a dead now. Gotta, no, no <laughs> whenever I see those pictures, like, what was I going on in my head? No, Why? I, I, no, I, I, I don't show them. Yes, I yes, show, I the show them, show them. I got to show one, the, the Nick one first. Oh, oh my, my God. goodness. No, it's a disaster. The no, picture no. of no. cockiness. Can you say cockiness? cockiness. <laughs> <laughs> it's a disaster. Look at this. Hey, fans, do we, do we want this hair? No. Yes, we want. I don't I don't care. I don't care. Right, it's not coming back. And then the famous, the most famous of all. Uh, ah, right there, pretty tidy. It's not too bad. No, but it's such a long way. No, no. And then I, I start losing it. So, <laughs> how no long no. did it take you to? From 2010 to summer 2000, two years, two full years. Were how many times did you wash them in? The Three, four times. <laughs> 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 were, you, were you sad? Were you sad that you cut it or were you relieved? No, the, um, 
I was kind of sad. That motivation was great, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I still miss it sometimes. I say, oh. You go back in. Yes. Like when I, when I was coming out from the Kyle, city. Kyle, I, I have a picture on my phone. <laughs> I have a picture on my phone. We were together in, in Bologna with the yeah. national team. Ah. And uh, I wasn't taking naps in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, and so I was keeping the, the, the blinds open and, uh, and I was reading. And Gigi, <laughs> he still had the long hair. And to make darkness, he put his ears <laughs> on the <laughs> eyes, and I have a picture. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, seriously, he was leaping with the he was leaping with the hair on his eyes. Multi purposeful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, Jack. <laughs> this not hygienic. You should show, uh, share that picture. I will. I will find it. We'll find it. We'll post it. <laughs> All right. Last question. Um, question I always ask. Um, you know, if you can give advice to you know to younger players, to people out there that are listening, especially the. the youth out there that are listening, um, you know, that want to be successful, not only in basketball, but just want to be successful in life, you know, what, what would that be? Go ahead. Okay. Look at Gigi and do the opposite <laughs> <laughs> first. He's obsessed. He's obsessed. No, beside this is, uh, I believe, respect. Mm -hmm. uh, be respectful of your teammates, the people you work with, uh, your opponents, um, your boss. You know, you you can always you always you can always pretend respect back if you give respect first. This is my thing, and and the second is to you know young players to enjoy first of all, to have fun, to love the game. You know, you have to do mostly when you're young, but even after you need to do something that you love, and you have to, if you have the chance to do it, do it, and uh, give your hundred percent. Mm -hmm. You know, this if you put three these three things together, I think you have better chances to you know. That something good happens. Uh, yeah, for sure, love what you do because maybe maybe it's not basketball. Maybe a young kid still need to find his his passion. And then when you find it, you know, devote yourself for it, and uh, this means give you hundred percent. Work a lot because nothing comes easy without the work. I mean, nothing comes without the work. Uh, and be loyal to yourself. Be brave. Um, there is many things that in that certain points of your career need to you to do be be respectful be grave be be brave be uh designed to to worry and be better never be never feel that you arrive somewhere be humble something that nicolo understood very late in his career <laughs> <laughs> i understood um, but you understood when you met uh, me you understood <laughs> i appreciate you guys but before we go i got one more question since we are in a sneaker store so it's only right um, I just want to ask, you know, how do you guys choose your game sneakers? Is it by comfort? Is it by is there a certain color? Is it a certain style? Is it a certain like what? It, what usually what it is? Three things. Yeah, they have to be white, uh -huh. nice. low, yeah, and comfortable. Mm. Then I don't care if they are because we are we are Adidas, yeah. both. But you don't care. I, no I don't care if they are Donovan Mitchell shoes, yeah. Damian Lillard shoes. They have to be white low and comfortable when, it, when did you come up with this criteria or is it something that has it's come something up over it, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it over yes yeah. yes <laughs> for me comfortable uh -huh. first of all light because still uh, there is a lot of weight to carry <laughs> 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 and uh, less weight i have to carry no no comfort is the most most important thing when i find the shoes it's it's difficult that i change it maybe i like out some shoes but i to change the pair of shoes is you remember uh, your blue shoes in uh, oh in Fener? <laughs> no no those shoes really yeah. could walk alone those <laughs> shoes were destroyed this about until the last day that i could use them <laughs> no 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 you have yeah. no idea Kyle. Yes. you have no idea no but you know we need to be feel free in the on the court mm -hmm. and yes with that video i i found this uh, the last I don't, I don't remember the the name of but the model that you, uh, have, uh, don't remember you play with, uh, ah, no. They remember the Reebok, uh, all the Those model. were the old uh, um, Damian Lillard shoes. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are those are incredible, comfortable, yes. I think I found my... My uh, shoes, you're my sticking with yes. those. <laughs> I'm sticking, yes, I'm sticking with those. Well, uh, thank you guys, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys for being the, the first guests of this, uh, wow. this live podcast. Um, it was fun. I mean, it was a great conversation. I mean, if you, you guys say we could probably talk for another... Two three hours if we you know I mean we're really going to dinner it. now yeah, so yeah. I, I mean guys I have <laughs> if some you want questions for Nick now <laughs> <laughs> when did you start to stop being cocky <laughs> after I met you did you <laughs> after I met you <laughs> no thank you Kyle for having us here yeah you know next time let's do it just me and you <laughs> without Gigi but it was nice and you know you're doing a great job with this podcast you thank know you and good no, luck I think a lot of 
people is enjoying it because you bro you bring a lot of to the table you know and you make players talk uh, not only about basketball that's most important thing and most interesting thing and keep it up thank you thank you thank you guys thank you for all the fans and everybody that are watching thank you for airness uh for hosting us in, in their beautiful store um and we look forward to you guys watching more episodes take care Subscribe to the Players Podcast to listen to more conversations with your favorite player about their careers and interests off the court. You can also check out Upwa TV and GTM Family Productions on YouTube for more content. Thank you for listening.